Yeah, why don't we uh, pray and then get started, right? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you that um, for your presence in our lives, Lord. We thank you for leading us. Father God, we thank you for who you are, Lord, uh, for, your, for your indwelling presence, for your comfort, for your uh, guiding us into all truth, for empowering us, Lord. We thank you. Father God, we thank you for... Um, for the for the call that each one of us have and uh, for the beautiful and unique uh, plan and purpose that you have for each one of us lord and father we thank you for the uh, for the release of your gifts among us lord we, we, we thank you that um, you've given these uh, released these among us lord, lord so that uh, lord we can be edified we can edify others uh, edify the body and and also god exalt uh, your name lord in all this and we can be a faithful witnesses lord i just pray that we will continue to lord even as we grow in our understanding lord we pray that we will grow, also grow in our experience of it lord and uh, and as your as your word Lord, uh, and your very nature and character, God, gives us a foundation, Lord, for the for the best use of it, Lord. Maybe, um, Lord, desire um, the use of these gifts, God, the release of these gifts, God. You know, uh, right now, I just uh, want us to just go ahead and desire, you know, maybe there is um, uh, desire all, or maybe there's some, um, you know, one of these gifts that uh, specifically uh, that you you've been deciding you've been asking the lord you know just go ahead and just ask the lord and say lord i just want to see a greater uh, a greater working of that lord i just want you to work in me in these in these ways right maybe um, you've been pursuing um, uh, that one thing and uh, yeah uh, i know that um, the holy spirit you know comes with all these gifts and he desires to manifest uh, these gifts in, our, in and through us um but as a, as the scriptural exhortation instruction is that desire pursue love and desire spiritual gifts you know as much as we pursue love the the, the character of god the very nature of god the love of god uh, to be uh, expressed in and through us you know maybe also desire in equal measure the um, the and pursue the spiritual gifts you know that because that is the word of god and we are praying in line with the will of god with the desire uh, with the desire of god so just go ahead and, and just talk to the lord hallelujah thank you thank you lord yes lord Oh, yes, Lord. Lord, it is your desire that we desire these gifts, God. That we desire the manifestation of the Spirit in our lives. And it is your will. And so, Lord, uh, we come in alignment with your will this morning um, in, in humility and in faith and expectation. Lord, that um, as we pursue, Lord, as we... Um, as we do this, Lord, that you will, Lord, release in, uh, these gifts among us, in us personally. And also there will be a manifestation of the Spirit, Lord, greater manifestation, Lord, of your power, of your presence, Lord, in and through us, Lord, as we, as we seek to serve, as we seek to, Lord, reach out to people, uh, your, your uh, Lord, your flock, oh God. Yes, Master, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. We thank you. Let's just spend some time just uh, seeking the Lord. And, uh, you know, as we've been learning um, that God speaks to us and uh, maybe sharpen ourselves in the spirit and, uh, and to perceive, you know, the ways in which he speaks. Right? Maybe it's a quickening of scripture. Maybe it's something that he shows a picture, something visual, um, you know, we can, we can expect in faith and say, Lord, you speak. Um, maybe it's a scripture verse that he's quickening that you can go to and read, uh, whatever it is, you know, uh, as we pray in the spirit for some time uh, and be in the presence of God, let's, um, let's expectantly wait for him to speak in faith, knowing he's a God who speaks. Right. 
Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Father God. We just commit these sessions into your mighty hands. We pray that you'll continue to lead us and guide us into all truth. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, oops, excuse me. Yeah. Um, I hope we've been, uh, you know, spending time uh, spraying in the spirit, uh, really pressing into more of that in our, in our quiet times and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, really, um, it, it, this is something that we need to really grow in, right, as much as we uh, want to grow in the, uh, in the things uh, of, grow in the knowledge of God, grow in the understanding of God, grow in the word of God. You know, it, it, it's a package. So we grow in prayer, we grow in worship, we grow in an, um, uh, in our in our intimacy with God. We grow in the things of the Spirit, and uh, we uh, also, you know, in our walk with God, we also grow in 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 being uh, familiar or recognizing the voice of the Spirit, right? being sensitive to His leading. Um, yeah. So I just want to hear from you, like any. Did you sense anything as you were praying? I know it was a very short time, very brief time, but uh, uh, anything that the Lord put in your heart, um, any any scripture, any anything at all, um, you could probably share that. Um, if it's something too personal, you don't have to. Uh, but if it's something that's uh, you know something that is comforting, edifying, something you feel that. Um, Anything at all? Okay. Okay. We'll 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 try and do this every class. You know, um, maybe uh, at the end of uh, today's session also we'll try and uh, just spend some time, right? Because uh, uh, I mean, these are the lab sessions, right? We we uh, we read about it. We see that this is how. God speaks and directs, and it's important that we also uh, put it to practice, right? So we need to do that as well. So yeah. I just sensed, uh, you know, I saw uh, something like a, a tornado of light, uh, like a whirlwind of light. Um, normally when we see pictures, I've never seen a, you know, I've never been in a storm or where I've seen a, you know, a tornado, but uh, like I've seen pictures of it. Of course, I've seen some you know, uh, small dust storms um, from my hometown, you know, uh, uh, especially in the school where I was studying. I used to look out of the window and then see this um, this swirl, you know, whirl thing just going around and dust. And normally these uh, these things are dark, right? Um, so uh, what I uh, saw was a tornado of light and, and the fact that just like a a, a natural tornado actually wreaks havoc, like bringing in destruction, uprooting trees, uprooting uh, um, a lot of things, uh, uprooting houses, maybe, uh, and lives are lost. You know, uh, I just sense the Lord saying, you know, that when He comes in like a, a whirlwind of light, there is a, there, there is, a, there is, uh, there is healing. There is, uh, you know, a, a establishing of righteousness. Um, there is, uh, you know, there's a work of the Lord. That is done, um, and as much as uh, you know, we we see wickedness and uh, growing. That the Lord will show Himself strong on our behalf. The Lord will, you know, uh, show Himself strong as we pray and as we pursue. That uh, when He comes in like that tornado of light, um, there is the establishing of the righteousness of God. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I was uh, greatly encouraged to um, see that. So praise God. Yeah. Okay. So, um, any questions based on what we um, what we learned last last class or the class before, uh, session before that? We were looking at um, spiritual gifts, and I think we stopped um, at uh, you know we studied about the gifts of the spirit, the membership gift, uh, this uh, classification. Um, so uh, we'll continue from where we left off. Um, Okay, let me just project the notes. Okay, where is that now? Okay, here we go.
Okay, so we were looking at some of the uh, some of the things about the uh, gifts of the spirit, particular teaching of um, and particular references about the uh, gifts of the spirit and how all believers can manifest the gifts of the spirit. And we looked through all this, and we also looked at the fact that um, the gifts of the spirit and the spiritual things can be taught, right? Just like how we can lead a pe person to receive Christ, you know, the greatest gift of all. Uh, teach and then lead them, guide them to pray, to receive salvation. In the same manner, you know, uh, we can teach about the gifts and they can reach out in faith and receive, uh, uh, in addition, you know, to the baptism in the, in the Spirit, they can receive the gifts of the Spirit as well. And we know that faith is involved, uh, a desire, strong desire, uh, uh, to manifest the gifts that is involved, and we also saw that uh, you know they need to walk in love, right? Um, so, so we we saw that. Okay, today um, let's look at uh, yeah, we are on page eighty nine. Um, the gifts of the spirit are no indication of spiritual mat maturity. Okay, now this is something which really confounds the believer many times, and. Uh, uh, you know, we uh, sometimes people think, uh, okay, you see this, um, you know, person, you see this, maybe it's a minister of God, right? Uh, or or a believer, right? Moving powerfully in the gifts of the Spirit. Maybe it is prophecy, maybe it is healing, uh, maybe it's, you know, whatever, uh, word of knowledge. So we see that and and then we notice something else in their lives, which means, uh, you know, maybe that's a, there's a work of the flesh, right? We see that uh, that person has some uh, has some failings in character, you know, maybe financial uh, misappropriation or something like that, and then and then we begin to doubt, you know, maybe what they were moving in is uh, is not of the spirit. Right. So that we come to that conclusion, or maybe you know, uh, in whatever way they ministered, maybe they were just they were not uh, led by the spirit of God. Maybe they were led by something else, and then we begin to doubt uh, everything that the person did or said, and uh, and then uh, you know we come to such conclusions. But the fact is that um, there is, there are two two things that we need to take note of. You know, there is um, there is this whole aspect of character, which is spiritual maturity or to be Christ-like in nature, right? Um, and there is the other aspect of being spiritually sensitive and, uh, you know, being open to the work of the Spirit and to be a uh, manifestation of the Spirit and growing in the work of the Spirit, right? So we know that, okay, let me just put it here. Um, so 1 Corinthians 1 verses 4 and 7, Four to seven, right? Uh, Paul is writing to the Corinthian church, and this is a church which is really buzzing, thriving spiritually. So he says, you know, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Jesus Christ. And how does this great grace, grace manifest? He says that you were enriched in everything by Him, in all utterance and all knowledge. Uh, and is verse seven. He says, so that you come short in no gift eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and we return the page and go to 1 Corinthians 3 and uh, and Paul addressing the same audience, um, he says, and I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. Okay, so these were people who were um, spiritually hungry, spiritually manifesting uh, all these gifts, at the same time, there was a lot of carnality. Right? There was a lot of works of the flesh. Why? He goes on to say, you know, uh, because you know, you there's strife. When you have strife, when you have division, are you not are you not carnal? Right? Are, are you not like children or babes in Christ, childish? Right? So, so there is a difference between being sensitive to the work of the Spirit, being uh, you know, or manifesting the uh, the gifts of the Spirit. And there's a difference between that and spiritual maturity, Christ-likeness. Okay, so um, the instruction that we see is uh, in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 1, where Paul says, "Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts." So 
uh, both need to go hand in hand right we cannot we we can't leave off one and uh, and and go after the other because both are from god right pursue love and desire spiritual gifts uh, and he goes on to say especially that you may prophesy so so that is something that we need to understand right um, so so we need to grow in our uh we we'll grow in our you know a hunger for the things of the spirit and you know experience of uh the gifts and so on but also grow in Christ likeness in the character in the very nature of god um uh, and and you know express the love of god and uh, uh through you know to others believers and unbelievers alike right so uh, that's something that we need to understand okay the other thing is uh, the gifts of the spirit can be manifested anywhere at any time so sometimes we think okay i need to be in church i need to be in a time of worship i need to be in a place where you know there's prayer and worship uh, uh, going on and then only then can i uh, you know either pray in tongues or uh, you know the gifts of the spirit can be manifest well that's that's not true because uh, yes the church or the the gathering uh, when we gather together as believers that's a, that's that's a wonderful place to um, you know to uh, to manifest uh, to desire and to manifest the gifts of the spirit but really uh we we can desire and expect god to move in and through us wherever you know, in the marketplace wherever we are at home at uh, uh you know uh, in uh, uh, maybe your your shopping and then uh, you know you you want to share the love of god and uh, god gives you a word about that person who's a perfect stranger and um, and and he will do that right so uh, it it so it doesn't have to we don't have to shut down and say okay it can only be in a kind of a religious setting uh no it's for, in a, all times everywhere in the marketplace right uh we can of course the other thing is that minister to all kinds of people believers and unbelievers alike um okay uh manifestation of the spirit can be for a specific individual or at times it can be relevant for more than one person it can be collectively for a group like there could be a word for uh, uh, it could be for example it could be a word for a family that god is you know taking that family somewhere the families you know god is taking that family out of one season and into another or it could be for families you know where where, where we are gathered together as a church and god could um, you know uh, it could be for a uh, for a particular group uh, for a for maybe for a ministry team maybe for a for a fellowship for a church uh, so um it could it need not always be for the individual it could be uh, you know collectively and we and we see the prophets prophet prophesying over nations right so we see that it can you know it can be uh, collectively for people as well um and as we gather together you know this collective expectation and hunger for god um uh, really you know uh it um it results in god releasing more uh, more of his spirit more of the gifts um where paul writes and he says even so since you are zealous for spiritual gifts let it be for edification of the church that you seek to excel uh so he's saying you know you you let it let it let this be your uh, focus that the gifts be released so that people can be edified so what happens is um, you know how 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 does that happen Uh, how can, how can people be zealous for gifts you know when, only when there is a understanding of it right all fear all misconceptions uh, all uh, biases about that all those maybe bad experiences you know all, everything is um, kind of removed and you see it for what it is that it is uh, a manifestation a tangible display of the hand of god right when we see it for what it is and it is for the uh, you know for blessing the body of christ for the edification of the church it is a great way for uh, the the reason by which we the reason why we are baptized and how and the reason for us is to be uh, to be witnesses and witnesses with power and the, the way in which this power is displayed uh, is again through the gifts so when we understand that um then you know then there is an increase hunger and zeal and saying okay it's it's something good it's come something from god uh, and and so i can desire it and he desire it he desires it for me so so we do that right so we look at the truth and then and another great way is to share testimonies 
And when we share testimonies of this is what God did, and people share this is what God in God did in uh, did through me and in me, and uh, you know we we begin to desire. The others can also begin to desire, and and of course to demonstrate. You know to step out in faith and demonstrate that. To say, okay, if am I seeking God? Okay, what what would God show me? You know, is there a word for another person? Uh, and and to demonstrate that, to step out in faith and demonstrate that, right? uh, and that would uh, that would also increase faith and also um, uh, you know increase the hunger level of of the group right, collectively. Okay. Um, one one more thing that we need to see uh, understand about the gifts of the spirit is um, you know what we the instruction that we see uh, specifically about word of knowledge, word of wisdom, prophecy uh, is um, prophecy, which is you know uh, of uh, something foretelling in nature. Um, the gifts of the spirit have to be tested. Okay, the instruction we see in one Thessalonians five and also. In 1 Corinthians 14, we see that uh, Paul writing and saying, uh, you know, do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies. And then he says, test all things, hold fast to what is good. Okay, test all things. So, so which means that, um, you know, there is this discerning, there is this judging, there is this testing that needs to take place. Okay, um, and then we might ask the question, why? You know, isn't the isn't this gift perfect? Isn't the word of God perfect? You know, so why should there be a testing? Uh, why should there be some kind of a discerning and judging in order to see if it's right or wrong? You know, um, but the but the fact is that we as vessels, and right, we as human vessels, um, we uh, we are fallible. Okay, uh, we are fallible. God's word is perfect. And, uh, and the Holy Spirit, God's uh, God, um, God, the Holy Spirit, perfect. The, the gifts that He releases, good gifts, perfect. But the human vessel is learning, is growing in perfection. Right? Uh, is is still a work in progress. Therefore, there are chances that well, there could be uh, you know uh, the. The word of God being authentic and real, being mixed with something that is of my own emotions, possible. Therefore, we we test. Okay, so how do we test? We we just if it's a person who is releasing a prophecy or sharing a word, to to give the recipient, you know, maybe as an individual and collectively to to take it and see it for what it is. Okay, you give something and you say, okay, now you test it. Okay. You check against the word of God, you check it with the nature, the character of God, and if you see it is good, you hold fast. Okay, so test all things, hold fast to what is good. Okay, and uh, there's nothing wrong. It's not a display of unbelief or doubt if we need to test a maybe a prophetic word or um, you know a prophetic uh, uh, an instruction. It's not uh, an act of unbelief. Does it um, uh, does it agree with the word of God? Does it uh, gel with the character and the nature of God? Right? Does it contradict any of these things? Does it glorify the Lord? So uh, we put it through the test, uh, and uh, and then we um, we we receive it. Okay. So one Corinthians fourteen also Paul says the same thing. Let two or three prophets speak, and let the others judge. Okay. Um, Okay, so that is something that we uh, see. Okay, uh, in the Old Testament, well, if there was an error, the prophet was, you know, was stoned to death. But we are in the dispensation of grace, and therefore we test, and we, um, and then we release. Okay? And the same thing, you know, when we release it, or when we, let's say, when when I share it uh, I test it and then share okay so that's my responsibility okay and uh, the person who's receiving who's a recipient also tests and holds fast so um, so that is the thing a lot of damage a lot of um, uh, you know a lot of uh, hurt happens because people do not test you know we say oh that person said therefore it has to be you know it has to be true well um, 
there are certain things which are encouraging you know like uh, like one corinthians 14 talks about uh, prophecy which which brings in edification you know like a simple gift of prophecy uh, which it should be which results in edification comfort and exhortation um so which which really uh, uh which is fine you know it's a, it's a comfort it could be a scripture it could it's a comfort and this is this says the lord you know this is what the lord I, i sense this is what god is saying which is fine but think about some things which are you know which are instructional which are like um, you know there's a date and time involved and uh, which which uh, which which are instructional in the sense okay there is a major decision that is involved okay like uh, okay god is calling you to this um yeah so how can we test the prophecy so the first one is of course we're going to look at that divya but uh, the first one is of course to see whether uh, whether it uh, the prophetic word is in line with the word of god does it contradict the word of god in any way uh, so when we say you know the the principle the precepts and the principles of the word of god right um, you know if there is um, uh, if there is an instruction if, if there is a prophecy saying okay go and do this and that act is not a righteous one okay it's it seems to be manipulative in nature it's not a righteous one then you know for sure that that is uh, that is not from god okay um so that is uh, that is one test you know does it agree with the with the word of god right now there could be something which is um, uh, which is fine you know which does not contradict the word of god it could be like okay uh, well the word of god says you go and start a church or you do this ministry now it's uh, it's in line with the word of god okay so um but is that something which is true okay so so then there are other other tests in the sense uh, you know uh, what is the plan and purpose of god for my life you know what has he been leading me to do you know if he's been leading me to to be a uh, a software engineer and then suddenly you know in the second year or a third year there is a you know just a, a you know a 180 degree turn then i need to be careful right and uh, what what can i do in that case you know okay i tested against the word i know it's it's perfect yes this is something that god would speak it is something in the line and uh, nature and character of god yes but is that his plan for my life okay so then what i can do i can pause and and ask god to confirm it lord you confirm it to you know other other means you know you confirm it to me yes you you brought this word through this person i i honor it i receive it but lord you confirm it and maybe and the lord will confirm the lord will confirm to you specifically personally and the lord will confirm through other sources also right and uh, and so that is another thing you know wait for confirmation um uh, of that word maybe something that is repeated over and over again and uh, yeah so that would be uh, we we're going to look at uh, other things also in addition but then these are two major things that we can look at no one is the word of god uh, does it go against the, the character and nature of god um and uh, which of course the word will also reveal but if there's nothing specific in the word you know it's a good thing then um, then we wait for confirmation okay right okay so um uh, there are a couple of other things you know where paul says you know i show you a more excellent way okay so he's talking about all these gifts on corinthians 12 and then um he goes on to say i show you a more excellent way desire you know uh, that's how it ends right uh, chapter 12 the earnestly desire the best gifts and we we saw what is this best gifts um you know uh, why should we desire that and he says and yet i show you a more excellent way okay and that more excellent way is about love is about agape the love or the god kind of love and he goes on to explain in chapter 13 um the the love of god okay, the god kind of love and uh, and he goes on to say if i have this gift but if i don't have love then it is a it is something that is empty you know it's something that makes noise it's something that is uh that is not of any use right so what is paul teaching there paul is teaching that uh, the gifts the motivation for the gifts the, the it it must be love 
and the way in which the gifts are ministered to people it must be out of love and in love okay and it it should be with this kind of love which is the god kind of love so that is what this whole uh, you know the ch chapter is about um, i know you know we many times uh, uh, we use it in you know in weddings and uh, nothing wrong in that because uh, it talks about the love of god the, the the characteristic of the love of god that the love of god is patient and kind and so on but really the context is in the use of the gifts so which means if uh, let's say you know there's a prophetic word and uh, i minister to people let it be out of love you know uh, it is patient you know love is kind uh, love does not parade itself so we learn a lot okay uh, you know there is god speaking uh, in me and, and through me so when i serve uh, let me first understand that i'm serving the person you know with this gift okay so there is no uh, i'm not putting myself on a pedestal i'm serving right? uh, the second thing uh, we, we understand is you know when we go through the list it says that yeah love is uh, is not boastful or it's not it's not proud it's not puffed up so in the ministry of the gift you know i need to be careful that i am actually not putting myself up or i'm not boasting in myself or i'm not displaying myself right? exalting myself because love is not proud so it has to be tempered with love okay it's not does not parade itself does not behave rudely verse 5 1 Corinthians 13 verse 5 uh, does not behave rudely. So in the you remember that we this is uh, you know this is the display of the Holy Spirit. So you know whether it's healing or whether it's uh, you know, whether it's a, a word of knowledge, there's no need for rudeness. Right? There's no need to be rude. Okay, maybe temperamentally you know one one can be um, you know not a person of many words. You know like okay very short. Uh, you know what you call you speak uh, in short sentences and you speak authoritatively that's fine but there's no reason to act rudely right uh, there's no reason to minister in a uh, in a rude manner um, so you you see all that okay so uh, i I'd, I'd like to come back to this you know after we go through uh, the list of the gifts of the spirit you know after we uh, study the nine um, gifts of the spirit that are listed we'll come back to it and then it will make even more sense okay so um, so just remember that uh, the chapter 13 uh, is there so that we understand that we need to minister out of out of love our motive is love okay okay um, so let's continue let's um, Okay, um, so that's chapter five. Let's go on to, um, you know, uh, chapter six in 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 the in the note and in, in this book is about uh, the release of the gifts and uh, a little bit of what we learned about um, the five spirit senses is uh, you know there's a, a repetition of that and and uh, I won't go into that. But um, let's just move on to, um, yeah. Uh, oh, just a minute, sorry. Yeah, let's move on to, you know, training our spiritual senses. Okay. So we need to understand. Uh, I think th this is uh, very important, very, uh, you know, it's, it's key to, um, uh, to really settling all the, uh, all the confusions uh, on page 115 and uh, distinguish the voice of the spirit from the voice of the soul okay so which um, so i'm sure you learned about spirit soul and body 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23 talks about you know the spirit and the soul and the body uh, we know what is from the spirit of god which is deposited in our spirit and we know what can be from the voice of the soul which means it can be our our mind our will our uh, will our emotions, etc. Right. So we really need to, uh, you know, grow in distinguishing this. Okay. Now let's say, you know, even when I'm praying, uh, you know, I pray so much out of love, and I I want something good for that person to happen. So, uh, so in that sense, you know, what can sometimes happen is that because 
of me wanting or desiring the good thing to happen, wanting or desiring that God should, you know, touch and bless this person, you know, maybe it's my own imagination sometimes that I share, you know, certain things and and say, okay, God will do this. Whereas it could be, it could be my own imagination. So uh, we need to distinguish, we need to discern, okay, is it something that, is, is this information um, that I wish to communicate or I'm communicating, is it something that the Spirit of God has dropped into my heart? Okay, Is it something that the Spirit of God is uh, leading me or um, uh, that he's communicating to me? Okay, the, So the way to do it is uh, is actually to start doing it. Okay. Um, Many times, yeah, we can we can study about it, and you know, we can say, okay, I need to know the word, I need to know God more, etc. Yes, but the actual way to do it is to really start doing it. Right. So, um, well, will we make mistakes? Yes, we will, um, but we will grow in our intimacy with God. We will grow as we grow in our intimacy with God, as we grow familiar with the voice of the Spirit and the way He leads us, you know. Uh, and as we learn from our mistakes and uh, as we, you know, come back to God and pursue, you know, we'll see that we will walk in accurate accuracy. But the, the fact is this, you know. Um, yeah, the fact is that we'd be so surprised that the Spirit of God speaks uh, so clearly to us, and uh, and you know, ninety nine percent of the time when we when we share, it is accurate, it is correct, right? So, um, so like it it could be simple words of uh, like edification, exhortation, comfort that we receive from the Spirit, Spirit of God, we see from God, and we share it with another person. Right, and we see that ninety nine percent, or maybe ninety nine point nine percent of the time, it is accurate. Okay, so all that we need to do is understand, and um, and not just move in fear, but really move in faith, and uh, and hear the voice. Of God. And you realize that God has been speaking all the while. It is not, you know, God has not been holding back. Uh, from communicating to us. It is we that we have not been expecting. It is we that have not been sensitive. Okay, So uh, let's look at a few instructions when it comes to uh, growing or uh, in our uh, you know, training our spirit. Okay, uh, The first one is this, that quieten our soul. So when we say quieten our soul, what does it mean? It means that we quieten our kind of still our emotions. Sometimes we are very agitated. We put ourselves under pressure. Oh, I need to give a word. You know, somebody's there praying. Oh, I need to. I need to do this. So we're getting stirred up, right? Um, I remember, you know, the the, the first time, or the first few times uh, uh, that I uh, it was actually in a church camp that we uh, uh, way back many years ago, one of the church camp where we had this um, teaching about the gifts of the spirit. It was very very new to all of us. Right? The pastor was teaching about the gifts of the Spirit, about uh, the simple gift of prophecy and so on, and hearing the voice of the Spirit. And uh, it was all extremely, you know, fresh and new. And uh, yeah, so anyway, so we had these sessions where we could, you know, uh, pray for the other person and uh, share what God is putting in our hearts with the other person and test it out and so on. And I'm so glad that we could you know, do that, make mistakes, get confirmation from the other person, and they, this is off. This is this is right, because uh, I, I remember soon after that, uh, traveling with pastor and, and going to a uh, going to a pass uh, some some conference. I think this was in North uh, uh, India, Nagpur, I guess. Um, and uh, I remember in the prayer line, you know, uh, we finished the we finished the con uh, meeting, and then there was a prayer time and in the prayer line there was a senior pastor of this church and he was in my line and uh, I was really sweating you know um, so I had to remember all that uh, all that all the teaching all that we received and say okay just calm down I can't do anything you know I can't just manufacture stuff I can't give this stuff if God speaks you speak if you don't get anything that's fine as well just pray 
and you know pray and bless the person so so it was amazing the some of the things and and he said uh, you know what you're saying is correct and it was very encouraging so after the prayer time and he said you know these things that you share these things um it was uh, yeah it's so true people have, a lot of other people have said told the same thing so for me it was a you know just a great uh, encouragement oh god speaks <laughs> and, and the thing is god speaks through me so excited uh, even through me you know those kind of things right so so the thing is that uh we quiet in our soul you know, all this pressure external pressure unnecessary you know, we don't need it right um and so we just quiet in ourselves and and say okay god you speak right i i, I know i'm loved by you so that's why you know this um when it comes to quieting us i just want to mention you know um the voice of the soul the voice of accusation the voice of um let's say unworthiness um the voice of uh, you know i'm not skilled enough i'm not experienced enough it's so loud at times it's so loud the voice of uh, you know the fact that um, oh you haven't lived a uh, consistently good life um before god so the, this voice can be very very loud at times and uh, that is why this message on our identity in christ who we are to god who is he to us is so very important right when we get rooted in the truth of who we are to him how god sees us how god looks at us right and the fact that we need to look at ourselves the same way that will just bring a quietness to um most of the storms emotional storms that will bring just a you know because that will just bring us stillness right why because why should i unnecessarily worry in this manner because this is how he sees me and it is it is going to be a sense of pride if i don't see myself the same way he sees me right that brings a sense of calm that brings a sense of peace so uh and it, and it happens every time you step up to you know minister every time you you know all the all the regrets all the everything sometimes comes like an avalanche and says oh you're not good enough how can you do this right satan is so active and satan you know does that but we we need to rise up and say no no this is who i am this is who i am right i am a new creation i am born again i'm no more living in condemnation i'm living um in the ways of god i'm pursuing god well i fall i might have fallen down but i'm rising up and i'm pursuing god right i'm i'm clothed with the righteousness of god in christ jesus i am the righteousness of god christ is you know that's a that's such a powerful statement right sin cannot have dominion over me and all these truths right you you be rooted in that you go back to this is a simple reminder right uh, when you rem- when we remind ourselves that brings uh quietness you know so we we quiet our emotions and we are not intimidated by by the circumstances or you know, whom we have to minister to it doesn't depend it, it just doesn't matter at all you know like you know, uh, many times you know our, uh, initial days of uh, ministry i was just literally thrown in the deep end in fact the first time i really got to speak publicly in a meeting was uh was a meeting for ministers you know like um, uh like a pastors meeting or something and and i i had just barely just joined the church and i was doing administrative work and leading worship and so on so um so it was really the deep end right but just to remind myself that you know i don't have to be intimidated by who or how many are there or all this is immaterial you know as long as god speaks i will deliver and uh, you know if he doesn't speak there's nothing there's no you know prophetic word or utterance to deliver just um, yeah so you know so the thing is to quiet our soul and then listen to the holy spirit because if we do not quieten um they're like you know everything else seems to be louder than the voice of the spirit 
right? Okay. Secondly, the first voice is God's voice. You know. Um, see, we believe we believe that God is a speaking God. We know that He will speak, and we we pray, and we are expectant, and we are waiting on Him, and God put something in our spirit you know it comes like a like sometimes it's just a flash of information um it is a, a scripture that he quickens is of you know a, a face of someone you know whom you should pray for whatever um so we receive that okay this happens it goes through our mind this uh, you know we receive it in our spirit but what most times what happens is that we cancel it out we begin reasoning Okay, we begin reasoning. Uh, reasoning, well, if it's reasoning with our renewed mind, then it's great. But we begin reasoning, uh, you know, sometimes with our unrenewed thinking. Okay, uh, it's a reasoning of no, it cannot be, or it's a reasoning of out of born out of fear. It's a reasoning born out, born out of whatever unworthiness, etc. So we reason it out and we cancel it out. Uh, so then what we we begin to doubt we begin to say okay maybe that's not god maybe it's just me okay so uh, you know in the initial days you know we just need to probably just write down and and even check with the person you know maybe you're praying with someone and you feel that this is what god is telling you about this person someone there's no harm in just checking it you know uh, i just felt that god say this xyz uh, I just wanted to you know, share this with you. If it's you know, if you if you feel that this is true and this thing, you, you just, maybe it's something you know. Maybe you need to do this. It's something like an instruction, but you can always say, I preface it by saying, you know, I just sense this God speaking to me on these terms, uh, on these lines. But um, you test and see, and you do what you need to do, right? So uh, mm -hmm. the thing is, we can always do that, right? So don't cancel it out with our. Uh, uh, many times we cancel it out, so we should avoid doing that. Okay? Avoid canceling out uh, the the word that that the Lord gives us or the instruction that the Lord gives us. Don't uh, cancel it out. Okay. Okay. I think we'll stop here and uh, we'll take a break and get back. <laughs>